The more hits we play, the more hits we get. URLradio.net. Stacy Sturm and I am down here at the site, the protesting site, the camp right now, and I'm here with uh, Robert Taken Alive. How's it going, Robert? It's going really well. It's Stacy. It's, it's really well. We're at a defenders camp. We call it. We call okay. this a defenders versus a protest because I think one of the big things that we um, promote here, and, and and it's called the Red Red Warrior Camp, and we're defending the future of our grandchildren. Our ta we call them Tankojas and um, the ones not yet to be born yet. And so what we leave, what we leave for them, they're gonna have for the next generation. So we look look down in time, look, look past the next generation into the next generation. And that's how we were taken care of as, as grandchildren too, by our, 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 our grandparents. And so as a council member, as a council member, we've, I've, been informing the community, one of the eight communities, it's running Antelope, Little Eagle, and um, letting them know that it's peaceful, it's spiritual, so our spiritual people in our homes are praying in their homes also. So some of them come and they go and, and they shift from our, our local communities, but here on the last I looked up at the access road there for the pipeline uh, off Highway 1806, um, there was 14 tribal flags. Now, when we say 14 tribal flags, that means we're, they're federally recognized. Now, mm -hmm. we also have provinces that are here from Canada. We have people that are from, you know, um, uh, not they're not federally recognized tribes, but they're a tribe. So they're here also. So the count is is pretty large for the people that are represented here. And the languages you'll hear. So far in this camp, I heard um, 15 different tribal languages that were spoken in their presentations. And um, within those 15, you have bands or clans, or like for us, they're called Teoshpayes. And the Teoshpaye here on Standing Rock, we have the Ihonktawa, the Dakota speakers, and then the Honkpapa. Also, the other Lakota tribes have their, they have their own um, specific way they speak their language that identifies them as who they are. So that's that's seven, that's eight separate languages alone. And then you got the Menominee, you got the, the tribes out of Wisconsin, you got the tribes, the, the Navajo Nation was here yesterday, and that they have a million members and they're coming a lot of their members are coming uh, tomorrow on Monday so but yeah I, I'm just I, I'm just in awe of all of it um, and like I said you know the Standing Rock uh, Tribal Council we went on uh, resolution to um, say we don't want this pipeline we don't we, we disagree on the location we disagree with it going through the body of water and we disagree with it even being brought to us simply because it's it's asking us to not look ahead in the next generation for our people and our first our first uh, medicine is water the Lakota people and our Hunk Papa people our Hunk people our first medicine is water and if we pollute that we're not going to have a future um, everything's going to be um, not as pure as it could be if the water is disturbed then we, we become that generation that has asked an ending to the people that are coming in. So I think one of the things that needs to be, the, the media need, needs to understand is that this is a, a defender um, defender camp and, and it, it, it's defending the future generations and, and wanting, wanting, wanting that known to the world. So they want to have a lot of information out there that's actual. Um, I haven't seen any firearms here. I haven't seen uh, any. Um, I wouldn't. I don't know how you identify a protester that's really an activist. I haven't seen anybody here like that. Well, we we've had some discussions on different issues, but we've always said, and we we'll always will say, is that we're defending. We're not. We're not aggressing and going after something that don't belong to us. And uh, we defend our women and our children.
children are elderly and we defend them and so we don't aggressively go after people so I just wanted to share that share that with with the people also that are not here um, and I don't know how far you're your broadcast reaches we um all 50 states and 84 countries okay so i think i'm um, doing the best i can uh, i know chairman or i i tell him and he's also my nephew um, i tell chairman or i'll do the best i can uh, and it's hard because when you speak the language uh, lakota language um, it, it's how lila ota uogla it's really a, a lot of new things that we're talking about here, but they're very important also. So, you have to understand them fully and you have to address them slowly so you fully understand what you're deciding. Because the bottom line to it all is any decision that's made has to be the people that are going to be affected by the decision. Who are the grassroots people? Who are the ones that are in their homes yet, that are living their daily lives? So there are also opposition, native opposition to this too. And uh, the reason why they don't the reason why they don't understand the concept of this is because they haven't lived um, amongst amongst the grassroots people or they haven't heard the real true need it's not a material need that we're looking for what we're looking for is a um, is our culture our traditions that we had pre pre reservation day we've always been that people that took care of each other we were we were a communal people uh, and first and foremost the spiritual person people and so with that being said you know our spirituality is a personal relationship it is it isn't a you know it, it isn't one all you know one one thing fits everybody it's individual the spirit their spirituality is from that person to the the higher being so with that being asked have that back into our into our homes and back into our communities that's what we're asking for and with that with that request comes the water so so people that for people that don't know the Dakota Access Pipeline um, they say well they can't be upset it doesn't run on reservation land but it runs literally like half a mile away from you guys right and through your water source uh, that's correct um, one of the things I guess that um, we're not so much worried about um, where it is but what it can do you know and the thing is is that where it is is on what we call Aboriginal homeland we have several treaties 18 1825 1851 each treaty 1868 made the land base smaller for us and and we and I, and I've heard my grandparents say this as we never took that and asked for that we didn't say here's a treaty this is what we agreed to it was brought to us okay this is what we agreed to okay so now we're where we're at so one of the things that um, with the Dakota Access Pipeline they didn't come and come to an agreement with the tribal council who represent our grassroots people they didn't say this is how we're gonna do it this is this is what we're gonna do okay this is what the law says so we're following it we're following it three quarters of the way so we're not following a hundred percent of the way so in a court case coming up that we have on the 24th with uh, the uh, with uh, um, Dakota access within with uh, the judge and we went by their law this is the law we went by these are the things that we identified and how are you gonna follow those those are your rules those are your rules those are your laws yeah so so what do, what do you think people what kind of misconceptions do you think people have about what's going on here Robert um, I think one of them is that one of course the camp is a is a militant camp and that's wrong this is a spiritual camp just as was the in uh, little bighorn a greasy grass we had a it was a spiritual gathering so that 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 spiritual gathering that we had um, identified our people that are praying just like here we, we it's a spiritual gathering and so that gathering is bringing together 
our people in a way that we need to have, um, I guess, a, um, a, the outside outside world needs to have a bigger understanding, better understanding of who we are. So, and I think that's that's the biggest misconception. The second part is that, you know, um, as tribal people, we've always taken care of each other. We've always been been there for, and when, 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 when we 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 uh, took took care of the we took care of the people around us, non-natives, natives, uh -huh. other tribal people. So we fed them, we housed them. One of the things is that. <clears throat> was was uh, shared with with us with me was you know when the when the when the settlers came they had the bible and we had the land and and we we had the we had the houses and they needed a house now uh, we have the bible and they have the land and they have the houses and we need the houses and that's how the older people put it as that's how it is now so with that being said you know that's nothing nothing um, close to being militant that's just facts mm -hmm. that sharing and how do we go about addressing these issues in a nation to nation agreement so as a as a member of the tribal council and more as a member of the grassroots people I think the misconception is that all the people on Standing Rock are, you know, this is this is this is the way they are. But we're not. Um, for me, I got my undergraduate at the University of Mary, and then I got my graduate out of uh, USD through o Oglala Lakota College on the Pine Ridge Reservation. So I'm a trained, my I'm a certified superintendent. Also, I'm a speaker of the language too, and and we can do anything our minds put us, you know, we get the opportunity. And I was very um, lucky to have two parents that put their lives into me so I can be who I am today. Also, my relatives um, helped raise me, a uh, lot of caring. I still have relatives that care for me yet. I'm not, I'm not walking in the earth by myself, but that's who we are. Uh, the misconception is that we're alone and you know, we're by ourselves and you know, our, our, our learning levels are very low, but I've always said if you want to change, you got to be that change. So that's how that that conception for me and that misconception for the outside world is that is that we can't do that. And so for me, I, uh, within my community, I've proven myself. Within my reservation, I've proven myself, and outside my reservation, I've proven myself. And I didn't do that to prove it to anybody. I did that for my children, my grandchildren, my relatives, the people on Standing Rock. They they can do it. They can, you know. And I, I never expect anything out of my community that I haven't done myself. So that's the conception that I hope we get. Now, how are you handling this growth? Because you guys started off as just really a small kind of group of defenders mm -hmm. that were just kind of letting it be known that you're you're fearful for what this is going to do to the water system. And now you have hundreds and hundreds of people here from all over the country, Robert. How are you handling this growth? One of the things that the uh, chairman... And P do you realize people like celebrities in New York are holding their own protests like in Times Square for you guys? Oh. <laughs> they're tweeting it. Uh -huh. They're putting it out on social media. You have Rosario Dawson. You have Shailene Woodley. You have Pharrell. Mm -hmm. they're, all, they're all taking a stand for you guys as well. All these celebrities and national people are joining in with you as well. Oh wow! I didn't know that. That's news to me. Surprise! Yeah, surprise. But yeah, with a with a um, contingency plan, the chairman, when we talked about okay, so we're gonna establish a, another piece, another piece to this, and there, and like like we identified, is there's several moving parts to this. So we had the um, the stone the uh, spirit the stone spirit camp that began, and then uh, out of there came the runners. And they ran first to Omaha. Our uh, first to Mobridge, South Dakota, then to Omaha, and then they ran to DC. Okay, so we have that piece. Uh, then uh, we have this camp. We, we knew there was going to be overflow, there was going to be um, more campers. So the chairman brought that to the council. Okay, so how are we going to do this? We need an overflow. So we need a contingency plan. So he brought, brought it to the council floor. So we got a plan for more people. So. <clears throat> 
that was a, we, the 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 trash, the porter potties. Mm -hmm. um, we had those contingencies, our um, EMS, our uh, emergency management system, um, and now it's to our understanding the uh, governor of North Dakota. Um, identified this as a disaster this area um, and, and and that's fine but mm -hmm. this is where the government to government piece is that if the, the state governments want to work with us then fine but if not then when we establish something like this a contingency we expect that respect from them if they can't give it to us then from the federal government because we're, we're a federally recognized tribe and we should be negotiating directly with the federal government but Again, out of respect for the governor and his staff, we try to work with them. We try to we try to develop a relationship. However, like this, like him doing what he did and, and saying this is a disaster. This is nowhere close to a disaster site. This is a Standing Rock Sioux tribe. This is this is who we are. We're the we're we're the identified of one of the seven bands of what they call the seven council fires at Ocheti Shakoi. We're the Hunkpapa people, and we always we've always been kind. We've always we of course our leaders. Sitting Bull of Kishoda even gave his life to to stand for what he believed in. Now, with that being said, we planned this in um, in anticipation of an overflow from the stone camp, sacred stone camp. Well, it got bigger, so we had to. And 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 one of our workers here, and I always like to give her a prop is uh, props is uh, Janelle Langing. She's been here every time I came. She came. She was here when I left. She was still here when I left. And the reason why I don't camp is because I, my community, I have, I have four disabled. I have you know a lot of people I gotta go check on before I go to bed. So I go home, do that, and I go to bed, take phone calls, get up in the morning, and I come up, come up here. And, um, I'll be flying out on Tuesday um, to join the chairman in D.C. Um, to sit in the courtroom and to listen to what our attorneys are going to put forward. And we've met with them um, via phone, met with them on a, in a conference call, and then with, of course, with them face to face. And we're going to meet with them face to face again um, on Tuesday night. I'm, I'm hoping that we can come to the conclusion that this is where we are. So <clears throat> with that being said, I think the Tribal Council has done a real good job uh, and the, ch the Tribal Chairman has done a great job of bringing this together. This is mm -hmm. a gathering that a lot of our relatives said is 100 years coming. So Very good. Now, say things don't go your guys' way on Wednesday, what are you guys going to do after that if this pipeline ends up going through? Well, I think one of the things is that we um, are spiritual people and our belief is that however it comes out is the way the Creator wants us, wants it to come out. We feel that we've already won the battle simply because of all the gathering of the nations here. The very powerful gathering that we have. In that being said is that with other issues, the, the national issues that we deal with, we could do this. Um, the people have shown their strength by numbers, by coming here. The, the tribes, the nations have come to show that we're here, we're in support. Now, <clears throat> with, with that being said, um, the pipeline goes under or doesn't go under, that's kind of up to, and again, it comes out to one man. Of, of these hundreds of people that are saying, okay, this is what we want, and of course you got the other side, this is what we want, it comes on to one man. So does that man, is that man blessed by the Creator to make that decision? I, I, I can't say yes or no, but one man can't make the decision to a whole, so we have to give that to the Creator. If that's the Creator's decision through that man, then we, we're okay with it. If it's if it goes if it goes where the pipeline is stopped, then that's good. But we do have other pipelines that are coming, and we know that. So this is not the only one. And so, like we say, you know, um, when we end our prayers, mitakiwa. See what that means is all my relatives. So when we say that, we believe that, however the outcome is, gonna be the Creator's decision. So. That's the answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck to you guys, Robert. Oh, thank you. And thank you for taking the time to come down. And uh, I don't know if this is your first time coming here or if you came one by here going to the concert the other night. But 
<laughs> no, it's my first time. I actually, I was talking with um, one of my friends, Sharice, who works out at United Tribes. Okay. And um, I, I expressed interest in, in coming out here and kind of covering it and, and getting, we don't hear a lot from you tribal chairman. We don't hear a lot from you councilman. We don't hear a lot from, you know, from, from your side of it. And I said, I'd really like to kind of get their side of it. And she's like, so she called me today and she says, what are you doing in like an hour? <laughs> like, I guess I'm going to Standing Rock. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, it, it's usually it's usually like that. You know, we we um, we have a, a media person. Uh, his name is Steve Sitting Bear. That we're kind of we're uh, identified him and uh -huh. press releases and what have you. But uh, Janelle introduced you to me, so I figured it was good to go. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I, but if, if if it was wrong, I'll take the blame. But Janelle, like I said, I trust her. Like she's my sister, so I did this interview because of that, and the need to get the word out that this is a spiritual camp, that this is a gathering of the tribal people that brought their prayers here. And they're all welcomed, and we all appreciate it from our tribal government. And I know the tribal chairman, like I said, he left. So in in I know he's stated that time and time again is that welcome. Uh, you know, we appreciate the prayers, so thank you again for the, um, sitting down with me and uh, I guess doing the interview. Yeah. So. Well, thank you, Robert. Yeah, you're welcome.